Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Terry Harper, WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World. I'm sure you never get tired of hearing that. And no. perhaps not quite as importantly, the 100th interview of my lockdown life. <laughs> so that's that's an honour of sorts, I suppose. Um. That's quite good though, to be fair. Uh, you've been busy. I was saying to Andrew, um, I rang him last week and I was saying I've never done as many interviews in my life like since I've been in lockdown, but um, it's made me get used to him a bit more. I'm not used to people calling him Andrew. It comes up on my phone as Andrew as well, or it did until I added him to my contacts. It just seems strange, <laughs> but yeah, you obviously know him very well. Um, <laughs> WBC Super Featherweight Champion, as we said at the start of the interview, the memories of winning that belt must be still relatively fresh in the memory as it was the last fight before lockdown. How do you reflect on it now as a performance? Um, well, I start off saying that it was a very special night. Um, and I think it was an important night for me in my career. And like Having that big win, it's made me realise that um, I belong on these big stages and that I can't. I can fight these top level girls because that's always something I've always probably lacked is self belief. So I think after that fight, I, I just thought to tennis now or never to, you've got to start believing in yourself and it, it's coming. And when you look at it now, was that kind of the best victory of your career so far? Obviously, she'd reigned for a while. She's a respected figure, Ava Wallstrom. And you got the job done in impressive fashion. It wasn't a particularly close fight at the end. Yes. It was, I, it, I felt comfortable during the fight and there's a lot more that I could have done but I think the one thing I'm lacking is experience and I've not been able to show everyone what I'm capable of. Um, there's there's lots of stuff that I, I know sparring's completely different but there's lots of stuff I can do in sparring but yeah I've still got to learn on how to do that on the big night on the big stages but yeah like I said I think it's just due to the lack of experience as a pro and as an amateur. Do you think your skills, your technical skills, get discounted a little bit sometimes? Whenever I see commentary, or you don't see commentary, sorry, whenever I hear the commentary or I read reports, it always seems to focus on your work rate, your fitness and your physical strength. Do, do you feel like your skills get neglected by by people that are watching a little bit? Um, I never really thought that one before. Um, <laughs> I'll take it all back. I know. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I just don't think I've really had the opportunity to uh, to show what I can really do. And me deep down, I know that um, I've got loads more levels and loads more gears in me. But it's just um, getting that experience, getting that confidence to then for me to push my boundaries and um, explore what I can do. Just before um, lockdown began, the fight was scheduled between yourself and Natasha Jonas, domestic clash. Although she was an excellent amateur and no one doubts her ability, in terms of kind of professional accomplishments, does it feel like a slight step down or at least sideways from Ava Wallstrom? Um, obviously, Tasha aren't really, she's not She's not fetching a belt or anything for the table. She's, but obviously, Tasha's got the um, all the amateur experience. Obviously, that I believe amateur and professional games completely different. Um, but I think, but I think, like Eddie says, it's a good, good domestic fight, and and I think me fighting Tasha is kind of a stepping stone in being able to boost my uh, my profile and stuff like that, and become more of a home, well known name. We haven't seen many female fights headlining shows in the UK. Uh, obviously, we saw Katie Taylor do it, didn't we, not too long ago in I think it was Manchester, and now assuming everything still goes ahead as planned once lockdown's finished, you get your chance to do that against Natasha. So that must be a pretty big thing in itself, the kind of event side of it, rather than just the fight. Yeah, it's it's crazy, to be honest. Like, never in a million years I would have thought I'd be in this position. And obviously, um, being on the undercard of Katie Taylor at Manchester Arena and um, seeing how, how amazing the atmosphere was there, at sold out arena, and then that, now's my chance to headline. And obviously... Um, co-headlining at Sheffield for Kel Brook. That was also a very good experience, uh, walking out towards the end of the night and all crowds hyped up. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to now have my chance and headline the show. And as a defending world champion as well, which must add just the icing on the cake. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, it would have been better than Doncaster down, though. I was just about to say, it was obviously supposed to be in, in Doncaster before the lockdown. From what you're hearing, kind of latest news, either from your manager or promoter or whatever, presumably it is going to be behind closed doors now. And What, what are you hearing about dates and stuff? When do you think it might be? So we did the uh, the press conference with Eddie a few weeks back, and um, Eddie was telling us plans are for July. Um, but yeah, we've we, I've had no set date, so I'm just aiming for um, mid July. That's my guess. But I've been training non-stop since the Eva fight. I'm only thinking earlier that as soon as I had the Eva fight, I jetted off on holiday and even on holiday I was training. So I've been preparing this fight for for months. I could say. Um, during lockdown, I've stuck to my training two times a day and I've just stayed ready. And you've got to believe as well that as the challenger, she's doing exactly the same thing and, and trying to kind of train as hard as she can during lockdown as well. Yeah, I hope so. There were, there were one thing that kind of worried me and Andrew that Eddie said on the press conference um, saying he don't want fighters to feel like they're being pushed into a fight, um, like boxing's being brought back too soon. So, that's, that's kind of put questions in my head. Is Tasha going to be ready? Is Tasha um, preparing for this fight ready for July? Because I don't want it, I don't want it to come to July of next few weeks we get a fight date and for Tasha to say she's not ready. Um, like, like I was been speaking to Andrew, Tasha's only a voluntary. And we don't really want to be waiting around. I want to be fighting in July on these. But it's an historic show. It's going to be looked back on in years to come. So, I suppose on the plus side... <laughs> You know, if, if for any reason it doesn't come off, it seems like at least half of my lockdown has been spent interviewing fighters calling you out. I don't know. Um, I, do you know what? At first, I used to take it quite personal. I used to think, why are they calling me out? And I used to, I used to think, what what is it that they see in me, why they can win me? But then I kind of thought, sat back and thought, I've got some of that they all want, that they're all chasing. It's the WBC belt, obviously, and that's... That's what gives me my extra motivation to wake up in the morning during lockdown, go out running or go training in my garage on my own. So that's that for me. That's my extra motivation to stay on top and stay on top of my game. Well, it's also the fact that it's a chance to box over here. Boxing's booming in Britain at the moment and challenging for that famous green belt, as you alluded to. I'm sure you've seen a couple of the interviews. I spoke to Michaela Mayer. She's keen to fight you. She's in a, a high ranking position with the WBC. I think she was hoping that she'd get a shot at Ava Volstrom before you did. And, you know, tough lines to her. But Katerina Tanders as well, interim champion. So she's got a kind of shout at it as well. And, and they're all kind of queuing up for you. It must make you, keep you motivated. Yeah, it's got to. Like I, like, like I said, I've got something that they all want and, and I want to keep that belt. So it's only right that I train just as twice as bad as what they are. Um, but yeah, like like we were saying earlier, if... if um, with the Tasha fight, like even if if Tasha comes turns around and says she's not ready, I'll be happy to fight uh, Thunders, who's mandatory. Or um, even looking at a fight, which which can, may, may sound crazy, but even unification fight with Ubronica, Um I just think I've been training hard and non-stop. I've stayed ready. I've done what I've been told to do, and I just want to make sure I'm getting having a good fight in July. If you fight Brodnicka next, I think Michaela May is going to start sticking pins oh, no. in the voodoo doll of you. <laughs> I think that would be icing on cake for her, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, I think she'd be really annoyed. <laughs> but yeah, that aside, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, your personal life, if that's all right. You, yeah. You've obviously got a long-term partner in Jen. And it seemed like a moment to me when in one of your recent fights, the Sky Sports cameras cut to Jen cheering you on from ringside and acknowledged the fact that she was your partner and so on it seemed yeah. like a bit of a step forward in terms of equality and stuff I don't know if you felt that too yeah um yeah I did we did an interview quite a bit back for um for Sky the LGBT month and and um, we touched upon that but yeah it's, it's nice that they're showing my partner Jenna and I've said it before numerous times that I don't think boxing fans are quite used to seeing a character like Jenna at ringside, but I'm so I'm I'm happy that they're showing my partner Jen and kind of showing what she's going through as well as what I am in the ring. What does she do for you? Obviously, you're you're a partnership and everything, but I mean, what does she do for you in terms of the boxing? How much of a support is she for your career? Oh, everything during like we were, we were saying earlier with this lockdown that she'll not be with me in fight week and stuff, but. Every fight week, Jenna's at my side. She's in them hotel rooms with me. Um, 
keeping my head focused and just stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I said it's, it's going to be it's going to be very strange um, down in that hotel room on my own in Essex, but um, I'm sure a good FaceTime call will do the job. <laughs> And you're one of only, I think, it's seven world champions from the UK at the moment and the only female um, UK world champion currently. You're also openly um, gay. Do you feel any kind of pressure that you're represent, or even an honour rather than pressure, that you're representing that, you know, LGBTQ plus community? Yeah, so f- for me growing up, I always had um, a lot of, People I looked up to, like Ellen DeGeneres and stuff like that, and it were always, like that for me were good, and it helped me be comfortable with who I am, and um, it helped me come out to my parents and family and friends and stuff like that. So I think it's important for me to be fully open who I am. I'd never, I'd never change who I am. I'd never hide. Um, and I always said to Jen, if I lose fans and followers from being openly gay, then then so be it. It's like no skin off my nose, and if I can help someone who's struggling and come to terms with who they are, then that's all that matters. You say that about losing kind of fans and followers, but have you found that or have you found it to be quite the opposite? Uh, opposite, I'm, I've, to be fair, I've had no, no negativity, which touch what is, it's, it's quite <laughs> rare to find on social media these days. Yeah, because I'm sure there are other um, gay boxers, both male and female in the UK at the moment, but you're openly proud and happy to to kind of involve people in your personal life I don't think that's yeah. the case for everyone but I think what you're saying is right in that people see you on tv world champion prominent and maybe the next generation will be a bit more comfortable and a bit more you know less fearful of, of coming out publicly or in the public eye yeah hopefully that's that's the plan just just be real keep being you and if if someone don't like it then so be it and um Steffi Ball, or Andrew, as you call him, um, which is his actual name, obviously, I should probably call him it, um, was telling me that you've started a foundation. So t- tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, it's been it's been quite exciting during lockdown, to be fair. Um, I've had a few, we've had a few Zoom meetings with us, uh, marketing team, and like we've, we're working on um, setting up a foundation in order to inspire the next generation. And like, I want to be hands on with it. I want to be. Um, like helping someone achieve their goals and and um like I think all it takes is that one person to believe in you so if I can do that for someone then then I'll be happy so yeah I want to be hands on with it and getting kids or young people like into the boxing as well as fitness stuff just just get them active and healthy what's the kind of initial plans for it what are you actually going to be doing and will it start off locally and then expand what's the plan yeah, the plans are uh, start off local and um, in and out of schools. We just, I just want to uh, get the message across, like no matter what walk of life you come from. If like me, I've been working in a chippy group and council house. Um, literally, I didn't, I can't say I didn't have nothing because my dad, dad gave me whatever, anything I wanted. But I've, I've not had the luxury of growing up in a rich, rich home, rich family. But uh, I just want to show that you can come from any walk of life and if you believe in something enough uh, and you work hard enough and you're determined you can get there. You mentioned about your um, childhood there and growing up in a council house and so on. Is there still kind of pinch yourself moments now, kind of top of the world, Sky Sports, soon to be headline act as well and, and having that kind of humble beginnings, it must be, it must feel like your dream still sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's mad. Like, I think this lockdown kind of gave me the opportunity to sit back and really soak in everything that was happening because um, and everything was just flying 100 mile an hour. I'd have a fight and then next news comes in for the next fight. So this lockdown's really given me the opportunity and chance to sit back and think how far I've come in the last few years. And it's it's made me excited for what's going to come in in the next few years. Also, like me and Jen, we just got an, an house together, as first house. Um, so we've been working on that. That's been keeping us busy. And just, just little stuff like that. I've got. I'm driving around in a nice car. Before that, I was driving around in a little Fiesta and stuff. Not that material stuff happens, but it's, it's nice. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just enjoying every minute. So, what are the future plans? What are the things you still want to achieve, both inside and outside the ring? Um, so we'll start with inside the ring. Um, obviously, want to get over to America at some point and and box over there. 
And then I'd say outside of the ring, eventually I want to make enough money to buy myself an holiday home and hopefully that's where I'll retire um, fat and happy. Where, whereabouts is that likely to be? Uh, probably Canary Islands, so it's nice weather all year round. Oh, I've been watching too much, um, what is it, Place in the Sun while, while we're in lockdown. Has that been your main thing to watch on TV when you've had your downtime, is it? Yeah, Place in the Sun, I watch. I watch a lot of YouTuber people's cheat days. <laughs> Doesn't that just tempt you, though? You just torture it, it, yourself. It's strange. No, it's, it is a bit of a strange one, but I know when I got them cravings, I think I'll just go watch a bit of YouTube. Well, and that makes up for it. It's like eating it yourself. Yeah, yeah. Without <laughs> the guilt. Well, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. And no, thank you. I'm glad the 100th interview was with a world champion. It's not every day I appreciate you can say that. <laughs> it's brilliant and um best of luck i really hope the fight does go ahead as scheduled can't wait to watch it and um yeah. it's been a pleasure and i'll speak to you soon hopefully out of lockdown yeah hopefully fingers crossed all right we'll take care and see you. You. stay safe and you bye bye